All right, guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today, we're going to go through some body tempering with Donnie Thompson. Get up and get down, get up and get down. So what I'm going to do, I'll start usually in the center of the body, and I'll just start with the glutes right here. Work that in there just nice and easy. I'm not going to be real abrupt with anything. Then I'll just start going down the glutes into the hamstrings. When I get to the hamstrings here, I'll put some, I can put pressure on. See how I'm doing that with the roller? Because most any athlete can handle a lot of weight here. And I'll just keep going until I get to the back of the knee. All right. And there's different ways I can agitate this. I can go like here while I'm rolling down. All right. I can go side to side as I'm rolling down. You can make anything up you want. I can exit just like here, all right? Or I can just do a simple roll right here, all right? And that's about it. And so I'll roll this out for a few minutes and then we'll go to the caps, all right? So now. Now, Donnie, for everyone out there, how much does this weigh? This weighs 120 pounds. It's about the average size for the larger ones. Now, go to your happy place and relax. Okay. Relax, all right? Nice and easy. There we go. Ooh. That feels good. Come back up. And down again. Now, I only go about three runs on this one. So I go right here on the glute, right here on the insertion, and I'm just gonna come down. Let the weight of the roller do all the work. You feel the difference on one leg compared to when we did two? Yeah, definitely. You yeah. can really get into the hamstring. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna rush this one. I'm not gonna go real fast. And again, with the like with DSC, sure, I can do a few different options on here, but when I'm on one limb at a time, I'm gonna go a little easier, just like that. And I would say for everyone out there, what am I experiencing basically? <laughs> <laughs> it actually, it hurts really good. So it's just a ton of pressure right yeah. on the muscle. Um, Switch it. Just like uh, if you were to go to like a really mean massage therapist, she's really gonna dig in and get a lot of pressure, but Obviously, we're not pressure point to one specific area because the weight is uh, much wider with the uh, with the tempering tool. But um, feels actually really, really, uh, I would say a relief almost like whenever you do roll over that area because we're able to find some spots that are nice and tender and nice and stiff. And I can feel the pressure going into it knowing that I'm going to get that relief afterwards and it feels actually really good. Now let's go over to the lower back. All right, so... Right here, I can get nothing fancy. I'm gonna start right in here, and then I'm gonna work up and into the shoulders. So let this drop and go where it wants. See how I just let it stop right there? So now I can agitate it slightly. I can go down to the top of that pelvic bone and underneath that bottom rib, oppose them, just like this, and the other side. You feel how you wanna gauge up against it a little yeah. bit? Then as soon as you relax, you're like, oh man. And I, again, I'm not gonna rush this one. I'm just not gonna crank it on you. All right, when I'm done there, I'll come back off. And when I'm ready, you take a deep breath and relax. There you go. See that scap? I'm on the outline of that scap right there. And I can just throttle that right here. Now you just let it go okay. nice and easy. You just roll with it. You okay? Yeah. All right. And then push down these hips a little bit. Go ahead and relax. There you go. And then I'm done. Then I'll just drop it off of here. So I'll always start and stop right at the hips, okay? Man, that felt good. I'll tell you, there was definitely some spots in that upper shoulder trap area yeah. that were just super, super stiff. Yeah. And I mean, I could feel the pressure and I knew like, hey, when I get done, this is gonna feel excellent. But when you relaxed your scapula, it was easy to go over yeah. it. Cause it just glides out of the way, you notice that? Yeah. It's not, uh, sometimes people will brace that and it's a little painful when those things go over. Yeah, definitely, so. yeah. So yeah, I like that a lot. So that's the, the back area. What would you have me do next? So the after that, you're gonna be on your own. 
Okay. We're gonna roll the front of your body out. Okay. Now, all I'm gonna do is take, start roll it towards the stomach. Okay. And come on up to your sternum area. Am I being braced in my core? I would, the first one you're going to. Okay. Once you relax a little bit, yeah. but I'm not worried about the stomach right now. We're gonna yeah. go up to the shoulders. Okay, so I roll it. And we'll just watch your mic a little bit. So now, when I get here, yeah. I'm gonna take my hands. We're gonna go right like this. Okay. And get the other one like that. Okay. Well, but at the same time, we'll let this, there you go. And then now let it roll back and just reach your arms up back over your head. Okay. Right there, right near your mic. There you go. And I could bridge up into it a little bit and then drop my butt again. Okay. And it was, uh, yeah, now it'll come down. And it'll nestle in there. Yeah. I'll just leave it there for about 30 seconds or so. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how this could be. Yeah. With 120 pounds. So this one's only like 45. To right, start off. right. Okay. We'll learn with this one and I'll give you the other one. You can go through a lot yeah. of this stuff again. Definitely. Now, when you're ready, go ahead and just roll it, push down like a pullover. Okay. There you go. And then grab it. Now, you're at the top of your stern right now. So yep. take a deep breath, let it out, and just let it roll through your abs. Don't brace at all. You'll feel it go through the guts and everything. Yeah, I can feel you it. Know? Yeah. And so I go three, three or four do back that. and forth. And you can agitate it, do a little figure eight thing. Yeah. I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to put it right in that soft area and just let it sit for a second. Okay. Let you adjust to it, okay? Okay. Now all I'm gonna do is take this bottom rib here and the top here, just like we did on when you were lying on your stomach. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna take and twist while you relax and pull that apart. See how we do that? Yeah. And then I'm gonna take the other side. Now I can't get as much movement on the other side, but I'm gonna get under that rib. And I don't want to put you in pain, so you just tell me no, when you have feels, it. No, it feels enough. good. Yeah. Okay. And I'll go this as needed, like, you mm -hmm. know, two times, three times, whatever. And I'll go right back into here. I was talking to Evan earlier about that, the muscles back here. Mm -hmm. why, it's our new way of our lifestyle. Right here. Yeah, like that. And we're good to go. Awesome. What do you think? I feel good. Yeah, could definitely see how that could open you back up, especially yeah. like post workout. If yeah, you're doing anything, yeah. Like just to regain those movement capabilities because everything just gets so stiffened down, especially after a, a nice hard training session. Go ahead and stand up and yeah. move around. And you can see the difference in the side. Yeah. Oh man, I can still yeah. feel like the yeah. upper back. Yeah, the upper back feels up. so much better. And then when you're ready, you can probably scoot a little bit over on the mat a little and just yep. roll those adductors. I like this one, especially because yeah. you can like really relax into it. Yeah. And, and just let that, the leg is being supported still by the box. Right and I'll sometimes do the frog where I'll just kiss yeah. the feet together. Yeah. You know, you look like a frog a little bit. Yeah, so. I like that. And again, you could probably just do your, your yeah, any way you want to agitate it. Yeah. And prior to squats, yeah. man, you can't beat this. So do you usually do your body tempering before squatting? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And I'll do the most thorough body tempering session right before squats. Gotcha. The other days I'll just body temper, like um, like if I'm gonna do a, a bench press session or if I'm gonna do a kettlebell session or something, yeah. right? I'll just do a general body temper thing. I might even get my back rolled out. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I might just roll the front of my body and go, go into it or whatever else modality I wanna do too, you know? So what's next? So now we're gonna take and put it back on your stomach. Okay. And I usually push it uh, right right up a little, go up a little for obvious reasons, and okay. then just sit up with it and put your legs straight and then just let it sit on the quad tendon. So you might want to sit back a little bit. There you go. Good, good. And just let it go right into this um, above the kneecap, this little bit of space it has created between the big thought quad muscle and the yeah. kneecap. And it will sit there and you can just literally leave it, leave it there. Yeah. And this is one thing I really enjoy doing I don't miss a day of this one. Yeah. I do this every day I'm in the gym. Yeah. When did you start body temper? Uh, it was June 2014 by accident. Okay. Yeah. How, so how by accident? I had a piece of steel. Yeah. And it was this size. Okay. And it weighed 129 pounds because the, the center wasn't cut out. Yeah. And we had it for many years and I had it for like 18 years, all through my power between days. Mm -hmm. And we had painted ex-wife on it <laughs> because nobody wanted to 
do anything with it. Yeah. There was like a big chunk of seal. We only use it for uh, the hold like this for back raises. Uh -huh. And then we also put on the wheelbarrow handles when we did the wheelbarrow, right? Because it gotcha. gave more weight without yeah. more barrel weight. So it never got used. And we were we would always use our kettlebells to diffuse tissue in the stomach prior okay. to squats. Mm -hmm. So we do not need hernias, right? Yeah. And so I told Levi, I'm like, what if we took that ex-wife and put it on your stomach? I bet you that can diffuse the, the ab muscles and stuff. And he's like, he's like, uh, well, you think so? I'm like, yeah, you, you go first. So I picked it up and put it on him. And I saw his eyes rolling back of his head. Oh my gosh, this feels good. And that was it. Yeah. And we started. So we started with the stomach first. Okay. Then we went to quads. Yeah. And then shoulders. And then after that, we started thinking, well, what about the back of the body? So over yeah. a couple period, about three to four weeks, we were getting everything except the calves. Yeah. And then like a couple months into it, we're like, well, what about the calves? And we're like, well, let's try it. And yeah. Everybody was screaming. <laughs> we were all in pain. Yeah. So, I mean, it never has been done before. Yeah. You know, so. It was, uh, it was quite a discovery. By the October, we had two centers in the NFL trying it. There you, you know, go. So it was pretty good. It's kind of, body temperature kind of started at the top yeah. and worked its way across. So. Yeah. I like it. All right. Now, did you next? want to try the heavier one this time? Let's try. Yep. So here's the best way to do this. Okay. okay. So go, go ahead and dump that off okay. and come on up. Let me show you the easiest way. So I'm going to take this thing right here and just throw this. You're not going to hurt this, this mat. You okay. Know? And right here. Now go ahead and horse you around it. Okay. On my back or on my stomach? On your, on your back. Okay. So you just sit like, okay. you'll sit right there in line. Okay. And then just grab the top and put, and then just put it on one part of your lap and then lift the other end up and go there. That's the easiest way to do it. Now you there can dump it off your lap. Yeah. You could go. Either so way. now let's do that same thing on your quads. Ooh. Now you see the, Oh buddy. The t yeah. There we go. So now we're trying to, uh, make that tissue pliable. Pretty yeah. much. Ooh. That, that feels excellent. It, it really does. Now go to your uh, quad tendon right above your kneecap. And so just let it sit there. You don't even have to hold it. Yeah, you can just like- Isn't that great? Relax. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like right in that mid quad. Yeah. Man, that feels excellent. Now your job is to relax that femur and just let it, everything yeah. sink and let it shove everything into the back of the pad. Yeah. So you see with this heavier one on the hard floor? Yeah. If you have something that- I like it, yeah. It yeah. makes sense to have a mat. So with some type of mat, anything really does has any type of uh, cushioning effect and work. Yeah. So yeah, I can um, tell at first it's your normal sort of inclination to sort of tense up. Yeah. Because there's a lot yeah. of weight. And then eventually you're like, okay, it's okay. Uh -huh. Just let it relax. And then you can feel it like sink into the muscle. A lot right. More. Right. And the big thing I, I remember you telling me was that this is not meant to replace other no. soft tissue work. It's no. basically another tool in the toolbox. Yes. Yeah, and you like using it to warm up, which I Correct. think is, is something that can yeah. help a lot of people understand. We have it. recently dived in, like Chris Stuffin came up with a big roller, geisha mm -hmm. roller that you can load to 250 pounds. Yeah. And we found, now there's not a real whole lot of movement with the 250 because it takes Brian Shaw to work yeah. that thing, right? But we found right after some type of heavy lift, like the squats, for instance, mm -hmm. we've already body tempered. So after we have done squatting, we'll roll each other with that 250 pound roller. Gotcha. And there's not much movement. It's like straight line, room, room. And you can turn it a little bit, Yeah. but you know, we roll the person out. It takes about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Yeah. And then the next person goes mm -hmm. and we'll take, you know what I mean? So it will, uh, it doesn't take long and intricate like this is, Yeah. but just the sheer weight goes through all the tissue and into the structure and it yeah. changes everything. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. And like over the course of the year, Aaron, if you have this 120 pound roller on you, you've got to get stronger. Yeah. I mean, it's 120 pounds that you're maneuvering around. Yeah. It's no easy task. Yeah, no, you know? not at all. So you're going to get stronger. Your yeah. absolute strength is going to go up. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. All right. So our next tool that we're going to use for body tempering mm -hmm. is this bad boy. Yep. This is a forge made by Corey and down in uh, at, at Georgia, at the university near the University of Georgia, and you can weight load weights on it. And in uh, him and, and Reese Hoffa, this is their product, and uh, Reese is a thrower, you know, and it's really good. And we we uh, it's very popular with the football teams and stuff. And I'm gonna find that spot like we had before, right in here. There we go. 
right there. Yep. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go right there. And I'm gonna take this and that. Now I can just push and I could use my weight. Ooh. And I'm really uh, like half the effort as I did with the other utensils. So with bigger people, this really works well. Yeah, but like for that. your size, I can do the boomstick or this, you know. And I'll put this here for tolerance about eight out of 10. Go for one minute. And then when we're done, just gently remove it like that. And then done. Don't just yank it off the person. Ooh, you know? That felt good. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, and I can tell too, like as a physical therapist, a lot of times we'll try to do some, some manual work sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, doing something like this just saves your thumbs. Like, you know how you go from your thumbs to your elbows and stuff like that exactly. with, with solid steel instruments, you know, yeah. you don't have to even waste your thumbs and your elbows anymore. I like that. You know, so, but you, again, you're gonna have to find, use your, use your hands to find the, the areas and then put the yeah. implement in. Yeah. But other than that, it's just, you know, it's a, saves you a lot of trouble. Yeah, I like that. Hey guys, I'm Erica Tiemann. I live in Illinois. I got trained by Dami. Um, body tempering certified, highly recommended if you're into this. Um, so what I'm going to do here today is work on his calves. I developed kind of a lower leg protocol that I've used on quite a few people. Donnie endorses it. Um, so we're going to get to that. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to have, I'm going to put this under your legs. Okay, so, so lay on my stomach. Yeah, lay on my stomach. Okay. Um, scoot forward a bit. Uh, scoot my way. Oh, there you go. Okay. So you always want to have limbs supported when you roll over them. Okay. You don't ever want to roll over unsupported lens. So to start with the calves, I'm going to roll you a few times. And if it ever gets to be too much, please let me know because okay. calves get pretty intense. Yes, they can. So I do a combination of rolling and what is called target tempering. Um, because I find on a lot of people, the calves are just real stubborn. I like to start with the one that's not as bad. Okay. So you can kind of get accustomed so to it. So start with my right one. Yeah. And I do target tempering. I start at the top okay. and I work my way down. And I'm going to do that in two or three lines. Depends on how big the person's calf is. Then I'll come back up to the top and go side to side. Okay. And then I'll roll you again. So again, this can get pretty intense. Woo. And like I said, the calves are just real stubborn. So I find this, if you've got somebody who rolling just isn't working, this target tempering. I like no. the way Stu calls it, yeah. Miguel, he calls it a tuned stiffness. In that we need enough mobility uh, to be able to do the task at hand, mm -hmm. but especially being a strength athlete, if you're too mobile, sometimes it can hinder your ability to perform the yeah, It so sabotages you. Again. Mm -hmm. Woo. <laughs> And so we're finding a few more spots as yeah. we're getting things to kind of let go. And women who wear heels a lot or just bad shoes, mm -hmm. man, the calves are- You can see are, them being a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that's one of the biggest reasons why we see so many uh, issues in dorsiflexion and ankle mobility. Yeah. People are just in horrible shoes all the time. Yeah. You know, so they're never, their feet are- We're talking generations awesome. of horrible shoes too. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know, the foot gets so weak because we're constantly using something to help prop it up and support yeah. it. So I've, I've been a big fan of learning about uh, barefoot shoes, more minimalist type shoes. And mm -hmm. There you go, mm -hmm. got some details in the back. Yeah, so. yeah. And just squatting barefoot in general. Right? Yeah, you know? me too. I haven't about a Except in January ago. here, I'm not squatting barefoot. No, I, <laughs> I promise you, yeah, you just got to step around. Oh. Don't step oh, okay. on concrete. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah, up here is not too bad. And then you just, in between sets, you prop your feet up so that the, the harness hits it. <laughs> where, where are your elephant putchies in that in between? I can't wait for you to walk. Feel, yeah, it's gonna feel yeah, great. Gonna be, I already know, like, I'm gonna get up and yeah. that first squat's gonna feel excellent. Well, like the way people describe how they feel after this, it's uh, always consistent. So I'm interested to see what you have to say. Okay, and I always finish by letting this sit on your Achilles okay. for a little while mm. um, because that pulls on your calves too. Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm gonna have you hop up and try mm. out your new legs. Mm. Feels good. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you just sit down. People a lot of times talk about how their legs. You can feel, feel them lighter. almost. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know it, like that lateral part of the calf is something that always yeah. gets me. 
So yeah, it feels. Now we talked about ones that you could do by yourself with mm -hmm. body tempering. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some other techniques that you would use if you're trying to do this by yourself? By yourself. So one of my favorites is working on the IT band because okay. a lot of people have problems with that. Yeah. So I'm gonna fold this up so you can sit on the floor. Okay. How do you just get into a 90-90 okay. with your legs? So, like this one? Yep. Okay. So I will do this one myself before I squat. Okay. So I do the adductors first, like on the Rolling on this one. Okay. And then I'll just flip the roller over okay. to the outside and start it up here by the hip. Okay. And then just sort of roll it down like this? You just this. roll it down. If you find a sticky spot that's kind of sore, really throttle into that. Yeah. Well, I can see here too, you're also working into that internal rotation yep. that so many people are limited by. Yep. Really limited by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wonder why everyone has mm -hmm. so, so much of an exaggerated toe off position. It's because yep. they're not because necessarily they have a ton of retroversion of the hip, but because they're just so limited in internal rotation. Yeah, and the way to make this easier for people if um, they are very limited is have them pull their heel cl closer to their body. Okay. And then the further you move your heel away, yeah. the more challenging that gets. I can see that. Yeah, I like that being able to get up into that, like TFL. And if you feel area. like it, you can go down into the outer cap area down that one yeah, compartment so down here. Flip it okay. And then mm -hmm. get this area. Like again, if you feel like Ooh, doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was I was wondering how you could get your calves, especially mm -hmm. that lateral outside yeah, part. That, that's your problem area. That's my problem area. This really... this way I can do it myself. Yep. And this one specific is one that Kabuki makes. Yeah. It's it's, it's right. as far as like. You know, trying to find something. I know some of the other ones are much bigger. This is yeah. one that you could easily do. Like put the lighter one like that. I mean, yeah. you can manipulate that. You just spend a little, another minute. Yeah. You know. I mean, you can just relax down here for mm -hmm. a minute. Just yep. try to relax. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot going on yeah. that outside mm -hmm. of that cabin. And I found that just out of necessity, like Donnie talked about. Like, yeah. you temper all these people, you get that wear and tear. Yeah. Plus, I'm also a power lifter, so you get that wear and tear. Yeah. And yeah. then you're just sore and you've got nobody to work on you. So like, figure yeah. out. Yeah. Well, the, I also like being in this 90 90 position, not for necessarily, I see people do like the 90 90 back and forth, which I feel like for some people, just the movement of getting in and out of that position is really tough for them, especially if they're not a very limber person. But at least if they're down here and rolling their calves versus a foam roller where you're just on your back, they're also working on their hip mobility. Yeah. They're working on moving in and out of different yeah, positions. Yeah, so a lot of people, when they first get into this position, they can't sit up straight. Yeah. And and I talk about like getting the, driving that hip where your roller is driving that into the ground. Yeah. Because they're like having to be kind of on their side, leaning forward, because they just don't have that mobility. Yeah. And so this is one of those that's kind of a sneaky way yeah. <laughs> to yeah, get people to do hip mobility. Okay. Now yeah. Arm out. Okay. And you can roll, and this bicep tendon usually mm. is pretty ouchy for people. Okay. Mm. And a lot of people can't fully extend their arm. Yeah. Because of that. Mm -hmm. And you also like manipulate internal external yeah, tension. Yeah. Little finger band things that I'll use when okay. I do arm stuff yeah. too. So. Okay. And you can go on down to the forearms if you're feeling brave. Lift it up a little bit over yeah, the elbow. Yeah. Yeah, so with the lighter one, you've got a lot of range to do with. If you were using that 120 right now, yeah, you could tough. not do any of that stuff. Yeah. And the, you know, for deadlifting, oh, your yeah. lower arms, I lost my grip strength in my right arm at one point because all these muscles were just really bound up. Yeah. So I started rolling and then I had this scraping bend, but it yeah. finally was normal again. I'm going to start, I kind of go with the angle okay. that you'll, you'll be able to feel soft spots right here. Okay. And I can roll that. Cool, there's spot. Yeah, so people that have shoulder problems, this mm -hmm. one is, is big. Like I was just working on some pro bodybuilders mm -hmm. and they were having problems posing. Mm -hmm. And this one right here really made a difference for them. So after I roll for a bit, I get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one will make you see scars. Yeah. I've seen tears. <laughs> And just try to relax. Nice there you go. Oh, there's a good spot. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, did you feel mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll roll down the backside of the arm since they're all tied together. And then also the like you can get in. Hey, um, right in there. Change ends. Like, 
Put just oh, turn it over. This one? Yeah, there you go. You gotta follow the chain. Yeah. Wherever the pain is, is usually not where you need to temper. Thank you. And I have like, I have a lot of women, especially who have trauma, mm -hmm. the psychological trauma. And yeah. so they're like constantly contracted mm -hmm. And it. Body tempering has helped them to, to teach their brain. It's okay to relax their glutes and their back and their legs. Yeah. Um, so it's, I don't, I can't say enough good things about how, how much it works. I mean, I found it because I've had knee surgery. My lateral meniscus had totally been removed because mm. it was so damaged and I couldn't squat at yeah. all and started body tempering and like all of a sudden this leg I hadn't been able to use for years mm -hmm. was functional again. There you go. Yeah, so. That's awesome. And for me, for nerve damage, when I hurt my back, yeah, you know, it just it really staved off the symptoms of it. You know, um, should I get surgery? At the time, they said, you've got a 50-50 chance we can make a difference. And that wasn't good enough odds. Mm. Now I'm sure, like 12 years later, that they know a little bit more and I have better odds. You yeah. Know? But before a surgery, I, so this really has helped a lot post-career, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I can still do all the lifts. Yeah. Well, Donnie, I appreciate coming out and rolling me for the first time. Hey, I told you my promise. Yeah. You wait for me. I'm you the did. one that's going to roll you out. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So thank you so much. Yes, sir. For coming yeah. out. And yeah. everyone else, check out Donnie across social media. And we've got a couple of other videos that are coming your way soon. So be tuned for those. Till next time, guys. Happy squatting. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have.